getting the STM32 running for the Rust EFI project. I'm using the genuine STM32F407G-DISC1. I looked at some of the copies but they seem to be the same price so I went for the genuine. Whether there is a copy that's stripped down that's cheaper I don't know. Go to the Russ EFI web page, we end up here, and down here we'll go to Software U Manual, here, and this is the instructions we'll be using. There's also instructions on the forum under Board Index Russ EFI Software as a sticky at the top, but that looks like instructions on how to update the Russ EFI firmware from version to version rather than starting from the beginning. So we'll go back to the full instructions on the other page. Uh, install the Runtime Java. So we download and install this. Then we download the RCFI bundle and uncompress the archive. This is a direct link and dir will direct download. Here is our bundle. We uncompress it. We get the bundle. Now we have to run this RCFI just to test if the software is installed properly and Java is working. So we'll try it. Run and it starts, so it must be okay. Next, we download the ST serial over USB driver, come down to the bottom, get software, accept, fill in your details, and download. You have to do the usual email, activate it, and then download it. If you have a Frankenstein board with the FT232 chip, uh, download the driver here. This part I'm not too sure of because it says to download the ST driver but not to install it. So I don't know if you in install it before you plug it in or after. I think I installed the drivers after I plugged it in and that might have caused the unknown devices in Device Manager. Connect USB to the mini USB port on this side of the board. We have the ST driver zip file. We Expand it out, select which one is for you, and run it. Check in device manager. I got two unknown devices, but that could have been because I plugged it in before I loaded the driver. Not knowing any better, I manually installed the driver from the ST folder from the ST driver install. All this driver install might have been not necessary because when I loaded the ST link software, it automatically updated two drivers and they both cleared. I'll add an addendum video of the manual install somewhere else in here in case you need it. Next it says to update the firmware of the ST32 in case it's out of date. So we go to the forum one. We have to load the STM32 link utility. Click open tab. Link utility. Again we get the software. This is the same, fill in the form, email, activate, download. Okay, here is our zip file, we extract that. We run our link.
link driver, install, install. That's what I mean about drivers being installed with the link software. Finish. The unknown device and the STD bug in device manager are now gone, so they've been installed. Next we have to update the firmware by doing this here. We go start. All programs. ST Micro Electronics. ST Link Utility. ST Link Executable. ST Link Firmware Updater. Device Connect. Upgrade the firmware. Great, successful. So we're ready to go now. Okay, now we load the Rust CFI firmware. We've got our bundle. We plug in our USB cable. And installed jumpers are shown below. My board already had these two jumpers and this in it, so I assume it's just standard the way it comes but we'll go to the forum because it's got better instructions according to this you should uh, click target program and browse to the Rust EFI hex in the bundle I don't know how any of this stuff works so I'm leaving the settings the same as what they are load the binary image with ST utility Click Target, Program, Browse to the Rust EFI Hex that is in the bundle. It's Rust EFI Release.hex. I don't know what any of this means, so I'm going to trust it's right the way it is and not touch anything and just press Start. Press start and cross your fingers. <laughs> My board is now showing a very fast blue blinking LED and a red and green blinking LED near the USB connector. I forgot the video so I'll describe what happened. I had a fast blinking blue LED just like this one. But this solid red LED was blinking red and green. At the Back on the forum it says uh, hit target disconnect and hit the black button. And after you've hit the reset button you should expect all four LEDs to blink once and then it should see just a blue LED blinking. So we'll go to target disconnect. Press the black button. I see three LEDs blink momentarily as I press it and then the blue one is fast blinking again but the red and green one has stopped flashing and staying on red now. I forgot to record this one too but I think it does exactly what this does now. I can't remember if this happened next but after a while these four LEDs lit up uh, four different colors. We now try to get the Rusty Fire console working so we now have to connect a micro USB cable. Again, I forgot to record it, but I think this is what happens. Plug in the micro USB. You get a green LED. The fast blinking blue LED blinks slower. Then a red LED starts blinking. We now see a COM28 come up. So we'll go to the Rust CFI bundle and we'll run the console again. We'll try COM28. We'll connect.
and it's connected. I have no idea what I just did, but I followed the instructions and I think it's working, so what more can you want? This might not be necessary, but I think I plugged it in before I loaded the drivers, but when I saw unknown devices, I thought to do it manually, and this is the way. Let's assume this was the unknown device before we installed the driver. You have to right-click on it, Update Driver, Browse My Computer. You have to go to uh, Program 86, then down to STM Microelectronics, Software, Virtual Comport Driver, and pick the driver again. You go OK. Let me pick from a list, have disk, browse, we now have this this one come up. Click on that, you go open and press OK. Since I've already done that, we won't do that. And this driver will come up. So now your STM32 is recognized. Well, that was quite difficult.